I've got my notes. I've got the ride. Welcome back everybody. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 things I love about my Terracon. So, I have my co-pilot and a navigator beside me, my son June. June, say hello to the big folks on Nomad Overland. Hello, my name is June. All right, now June, on that list of top 10, what is number one on the list? It's off-road. Off-road, okay. Now this vehicle does have some significant off-road chops. Uh, not just because of the tires that I have on, for example, but this vehicle especially has a four low, four high uh, transfer case that allows it to go into those low settings to provide torque to all four wheels, um, which really allows that much smoother, uh, much better ride when we are in fact uh, off-road. So really, really helps. Um, I've been in, I've been in some sand. I've been in some some rock and stuff like that. Some little stones, and my the rear wheels start spinning, pop into four, even just popping it into four high. Bloop! Out goes the car, no problem at all. So that torque plus the uh, low drive, super super helpful. All right, June, my navigator. What is next on the list? Mm. Ah, okay. So number two on the list, spacious interior. Now this vehicle is quite large. Uh, this is the 2004 Hyundai Terracon and it is very, very roomy. Now, I can not only put the back seats down, but I can also flip them again forward, which gives me even extra space in the back. So if it's just me and I just wanna you know, put as much down in the back as I can. Um, putting those seats down is just awesome. It really does open up a whole lot of room. Number three is affordable maintenance. Affordable maintenance. Now, this is an old car. This is, we're recording this in 2024, so this is a 20 year old vehicle. Now, I have had a couple of repairs already that I needed to do uh, following the purchase of the vehicle to really just make sure that it was safe enough for me to drive. That first initial uh, expenditure only cost me about $500. Um, I got the rear brake pads done. I got the rear uh, I got the rear emergency brake done and I had two new drums at on the back for the brake. So I had all of that done plus repair, took about two to two and a half hours and it cost me $500. To be honest, I think that is a pretty fair price. And if I had gotten a newer car, uh, like a Jeep or a Land Rover, that repair would have been probably double or triple the amount. So just having this older vehicle and being able to buy parts that are not OEM, but uh, other companies that produce parts for the Hyundai Terracon certainly reduces the overall expenditure. So low cost parts is a really, really nice thing. June, yeah. uh, what is number four? Old school tough. Old school tough, you bet. It has uh, one particular element of construction that I think is uh, very important for uh, a 4x4 or an off-road vehicle and that is body on frame. Now if you don't know what body on frame is, it basically means the car is essentially put together in two big blocks. So the first block is the frame, it's generally an H frame, and that then uh, the body of the vehicle then sits on top and it's all bolted on together. This provides a sense of stability and it also smooth, sorry, and it also smooths out the ride quite a bit. So it's a very, very nice attribute for an off-road vehicle and a body on frame is tops in my book. 
Number five, June, what do we have? Engine options. Engine options, that's right. Okay, so um, the Terracon comes basically in two engine platforms. The one that I'm driving right now is the 2.9 liter diesel, but it also comes with a 3.5 petrol engine. Now, um, diesels were more popular for these vehicles, I, although I do uh, know that the uh, 3.5 uh, petrol uh, is around, I, I've seen them, uh, but I prefer the diesel. Number one, it is better on fuel economy, uh, slightly, but better. And the other thing that I like about it is the diesel engine does provide that low torque, especially in uh, low gear. So those are the two main engine options that you uh, can choose. Um, whatever you uh, prefer, whether it's diesel or petrol, is completely up to you. To be honest, uh, diesel is just the choice that I made. Okay, number six, Navigator, what do we have? <laughs> Generally? Generally, under 10. Underrated. Underrated, hidden gem. Okay, let's just say hidden gem instead of that. Okay, hidden, hidden, hidden gem. gem. Hidden okay. gem. Okay, so number six on the list, Navigator, what is it? Hidden gem. Hidden gem, yeah. So I've seen a few videos on YouTube where people are talking about purchasing an off-road vehicle for less than $10,000 or less than $15,000 or less than $5,000 even. And interestingly enough, the Hyundai Terracon seems to come in at almost every one of those lists. Now, there's probably a reason for that. Um, these vehicles were mostly Asian, uh, in the Asian market, and in India, and Russia, and in parts of Europe. Um, they, they may have had some sales in the United States, though I don't know how much, to be honest. Um, so I won't speak to that. Um, also in Australia, these seemed to be part of the the uh, movement of Hyundai into that part of the region of the world. Now, um, people who buy these, uh, they will swear by them in terms of the uh, the cost of purchase uh, and their longevity. Like this car is. 20 years old and while it is certainly not modern by any stretch it really does hold its own uh, uh, when you are off-road and frankly that's what matters number seven my navigator what is number seven towing capacity 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 towing capacity towing capacity all right towing capacity. number seven my navigator what is it Towing capacity. Towing capacity, that's right. So, um, this vehicle is rated, at least when it first came out, to tow a, to tow something in the back at roughly 2,500 kilograms. So that's about 5,000 pounds. Now, certainly that might not be, that might not be as much as what the modern vehicles could in fact, um, uh, do uh, there are vehicles that are upwards of four, maybe 3,500 kilograms? I think now, um, but for the vehicle itself, I think the and the towing capacity, I think that is a fairly decent size uh, for for towing. Um, now, I do not have a tow hitch on this uh, Terracon. Uh, I have seen them with it. Uh, but for my purposes, to be honest, I don't even think I need to tow anything. But that I that I have it is a nice bonus for sure. Okay, number eight, comfortable ride. Comfortable okay. ride. Okay, so number eight, Navigator, what is it? Comfortable ride. Yes, comfortable ride. Okay, so this vehicle, uh, the... The driving position is nice and high, similar to that of a Disco 3 or a Disco 4. So you've got that, you've got that nice panoramic driving experience. Um, the windows, the viewing out of the of all of the windows is superb. Um, so I don't feel like I have blind spots. Uh, 
and the the vehicle itself um, now I know that there are some mods to this but the vehicle itself has a really really comfortable drive now I've got ATs uh, all-terrain tires on this vehicle as well and even with those tires on pavement uh, this is a very very steady smooth ride yes I bounce a little bit but that's normal but in terms of like you know in, in terms of the the cushion of the of the of the seats and of the uh, of of the tires and of the vehicle generally I'm I'm really happy about that so yeah this is a comfortable ride on road and off road for sure okay Eight. number 10 number 10 number nine number nine Ooh, okay what's number nine class classic classic do do classic body classic body style classic body style okay classic body style so uh what are we up to num what are we up what number are we up to there june nine number nine and what is number nine classic body style okay classic body style so what does that mean classic body style a classic body style for an overland vehicle is typically rather boxy and this vehicle certainly is that uh, this is more i think in line with uh, the jeep uh, wranglers and gladiators the lr4 the lr3 uh, toyota uh, the the toyotas some of the toyotas like the Land Cruiser, the old Land Cruiser, 80, 90, 100, those sort of things. It's got that boxy style to it. Now, why is that a good thing? Um, well, yes, it's driving a brick through the wind uh, aerodynamically. It's not very good. However, the boxy style allows you to have squared off edges, which means you can maximize the space uh, outside and inside the vehicle. Now this isn't quite as boxy, not quite as boxy as a Land Rover, but it is pretty close. So I'll take what I can get there. Okay, June, number 10. Number 10. Mm, mo modding? Modding, yep. Modding partition? Per modding? Modding potential. Because this vehicle is old, it's not under warranty anymore, there are a fair amount of things that I can do to this vehicle uh, to give it a little bit of an edge. So this vehicle does have all-terrain tires, it does have a lift kit, it has extra suspension, and that does allow me to have extra ground clearance when I'm going over things. Um, it's not really modded on the inside that much, to be honest, but certainly on the outside, it does have a few extra little spots, which are a uh, few extra little things, which are really, really nice. Um, now, a lot of the, the Terracons that I've seen um, do have similar mods. So these vehicles probably have had previous, oh, obviously, these, the, the previous vehicle owner has gone ahead and done these mods um, and it's it's really really handy to have these and I don't have to go and do any of these myself so in that sense it's it's fantastic the only thing that I've put on as far as a mod goes would be uh, the tires themselves so yeah so that's my top 10 list of why I love this Terracon. If you are a Terracon owner, why don't you put the things that you like down in the comments below? And if this via, if if this view if this video has been helpful and you really appreciate it, do me a favor, hit the bell, hit the sub, and leave a comment. Thanks very much, everybody. Navigator, what do we say? Live life well. Oh, very good. Live life well, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.